We are now entering our final unit for our Just Words program. So in this unit, one of the things we're going to do is be able to recall syllable types and evaluate words for the syllables they contain. And we're also going to be introduced to and able to apply the schwa sound in words. The first syllable type is a closed syllable. Remember, a closed syllable has one vowel. It has at least one consonant after the vowel, and it has a short vowel sound. An example would be a word like mat. Remember, in the word mat, we have the short A sound, and we mark it as closed. Another word we can use that has the closed syllable would be a word like math. Remember, we can have a diagraph following the sound or a blend following the sound, and it still counts as a closed syllable. The vowel is still short, and it is still closed. Consider how you would mark the word best or clump. Remember, although you have a blend here, you are still going to mark it as a closed syllable. The E is short and it is closed. In the word clump, we have a blend at the beginning and a blend at the end, but still our vowel is short and our syllable is closed. Our next syllable type is the VCE syllable. The VCE syllable ends with a silent E. It follows the pattern consonant, vowel, silent E, and it contains a long vowel sound. Remember we talked about the difference between the word hop and the word hope. Hope is an example of a VCE word. It has the long sound because the E is silent and it makes that O long. Let's look at a couple more examples of some VCE words. Rope, chase, wise. As I mark these words, I would like for you to mark them on your own page. We know that this is a VCE pattern because of the O-P-E. My E is silent and it makes the O long. In my word chase, I see the VCE pattern in A-S-E. The E is silent and it makes the A long. In the word wise, I see the VCE pattern in I-S-E. The E is silent, it makes the I long. The next syllable for review is an open syllable. Remember, an open syllable breaks a closed syllable rule. So it has no consonant after the vowel, and the vowel is a long sound. For example, we talked about that Y sound that we've now added for a word like sly. In this case, the Y is a long vowel, and it makes that I sound. So it's an open syllable. We can also have words like hi, which is an open syllable because that I is long. Also in words like relax, the first syllable is an open syllable because the E is long and it comes to the end of a syllable, whereas the second syllable is that closed syllable sound. When we look at our controlled vowel syllables, we're looking at a syllable that has one vowel, and the R controls the vowel so it changes its sound. For example, we could have a word like slurp, where in this case, the U is controlled by the R to make the R sound. We could also have a word like permit, which is a two-syllable word. And in this case, the first syllable has an R-controlled sound, er, with an ER, the second syllable being a closed syllable. One last example is going to be a three-syllable word, partnership. In this word, two of the syllables have R-controlled sounds. The first R-controlled sound is the AR in part, and the second R controlled sound is the ER in NER. 
The last syllable does not have an R controlled sound. It is a closed sound. Another syllable type discussed was the double vowel syllable. And in this case, you either have one or more vowels together or combinations of letters that make a vowel sound. And these are not short sounds. Some examples of words could be words like spook, turmoil, obtain, bound, fraud. As I look at some of these words that have double vowels, remember I mark them by circling that double vowel sound, whatever it may be in the word. And then I can mark it with a D underneath to represent the double vowel sound. I made a mistake there. Remember, I have to mark separate syllables as being separate sounds. So in this case, the first syllable has that U R er, so it would be R controlled. For obtain, my ub is a closed syllable with a short sound, and then tain has my double vowel sound. For bound, it's one syllable and it's the double vowel sound, and fraud is one syllable with the double vowel sound. In the last unit, we went over the final stable syllable, um, le, as well as sion and tion. Examples of those would be words like sparkle for le. Remember that when we marked this, sparkle, it's two syllables. This has the ARR controlled. The KLE would be marked with LE. And then we would cross off the E to show that sound. For SION and TION, we could have words like lotion or mansion. And in these words, I can mark them in lotion, L-O is an open syllable. T-I-O-N, I would box in because of the final stable syllable, shun. For mansion, I would mark man as being a closed syllable. And then I could box in S-I-O-N, shun, after it. The schwa sound is a sound that really won't give you much trouble when it comes to reading, but it can be really difficult when it comes to spelling. So it's really good to know that sometimes a vowel isn't spelled the way it sounds. So we're going to practice with some words where that's the case so that you can get used to that. Um, there are a lot of words with the schwa sound that need to be memorized for spelling, but some are pretty predictable. So some examples of some predictable ones are sometimes you see instead of I-T for it, you might see E-T. For example, in the word ticket, okay? We say ticket, it sounds like it, but we actually write it with an E-T. Another important one to know is that sometimes you hear the a uh sound in a word that should have an A. In a word like alone, you hear a. Uh. So let's look at a few of these and decide which sound we hear the schwa sound. The first one is travel. You should hear that this sounds more like a uh sound, travel, than it does an e sound. In wagon, the o oh sounds more like an i when we say it. In jacket, that's another one kind of like ticket. You hear that et sounds more like an it. And in a word like compliment, that I doesn't really sound like an I, compliment. So again, it's important to remember that the vowel is not always spelled as it sounds. Some need to be memorized, but others become predictable. We talked about the it sound when we spell it as ET in words like ticket. We have the U that's a sound that's like the uh, but it's spelled with an A at the beginning and end of unaccented open syllables. So some examples are words like alone and delta. Notice that that sound usually comes at the beginning of a word or the end of a word. Words with unaccented open syllables in the middle of a word are spelled with an I. 
for instance, complement. We're going to go over a few demonstration words for this unit as kind of a review of everything we've done. The first one is the word absolute. So when I mark this, I'm going to mark absolute. In this word, I have a closed first syllable followed by an open second syllable, so, and lute, I have a V, C, E syllable, which I can cross the E and have a long U. My next word is the word decline. Notice, because I hear D, I'm going to keep that separate from cline, because this is going to be an open syllable. Cline has the V, C, E pattern with I, N, E. So I will mark the I as being long and cross off my E. <laughs> absolute is something that is final. A sentence could be that fence is the absolute end of the property. For the word decline, my meaning is to become less or to reduce. For instance, the shop sales may decline with the slow economy. Our high frequency words this week, I'm going to read and spell, and I'd like you to do the same along with me and come up with a sentence to go with each. The first one is again, A, G, A, I, N, again. Come up with a sentence to go with the word again. The next word is near, N, E, A, R, near. Come up with a sentence to go with the word near. The third word is until. U, N, T, I, L, until. Come up with a sentence to use with the word until. The last word is the word minute. M I N U T E minute. Come up with a sentence to use with the word minute. So as a recap for this lesson, today we identified and created words using all syllable types, we evaluated the use of the schwa sound in words, and we introduced new demonstration and high frequency words. So today, for this last lesson, we are going to be able to identify and apply base words and suffixes. We're going to be able to recall prefixes and roots and apply various prefixes and roots to other words. We're going to be able to identify and apply the A, B, L, E, a bull, a vowel suffix in words. And you're going to be able to review spelling rules and evaluate how those rules can apply to words. As a reminder, we've talked before about the different word parts. We've talked about prefixes and suffixes. We've also talked about base words and root words. So we're going to start with prefixes and a reminder of what prefixes are. Prefix. The beginning of a word alters the meaning of the word. Remember, as we talked before, an example of a prefix would be pre. Remember, pre is used to tell you that something happens before something else. There are a lot of other examples of prefixes. If you need a review, go back and look in a former unit to see if you can find some examples of prefixes. Next, we'll do a review of what suffixes are. Suffix comes at the end of a word alters the meaning of the word. So remember, we've talked about suffixes in some of our other lessons. Um, an example of a suffix we've talked about would be EST. For instance, the word wildest. And that's one we use when we're comparing two or more things, more than two things. And we're talking about when it's the most of something. Next, let's go over what a base word is. Base word. A word that can stand alone 
or have a suffix or prefix added to it. Some words that would be examples of base words could be words like sing, dance, play. Each of these words can stand by themselves as a word, but you could also create a word like singing or replay. Those words have prefixes and suffixes added to them to add meaning to the word. Our last word part to discuss is a root word. Root word. Word part that cannot stand alone, but has meaning. Some examples of root words could be word parts like fract, which you can use to make words like fracture or fraction, junked, to make words like juncture, or lect, which can be used in words like elect or election. As we continue in this lesson, the next part is going to be going over some of the rules we've learned. First, let's talk about how we identify 111 words. Remember, we can identify 111 words by finding words that have one vowel, one consonant only after the vowel, and has to be a one syllable word. In addition, remember there was a special rule for multisyllabic words that included 111 syllables. Remember that in this case, you could have a 111 word as long as the last syllable follows the other rules and is accented. An example would be a word like prefer. The next rule we'll discuss is the rule for the silent E spelling of words. Remember in words like hope, fame, and line, we need to remember when we have that silent E, in order to add a vowel suffix, we must lose the E in order to add that suffix. For example, hope to hoping, fame to famed, and line to liner. I still will add an E to famed, and liner, but it goes with the vowel suffix that I'm adding. Remember, with talking about plurals, we can add S or ES depending on the word. But what's important is to talk about when we have a Y. Remember, with a word that has a Y that is part of a double vowel, like turkey, we do not add an or change a letter. We create the word by just adding an S on the end to get turkeys. However, in a word that does not have the double vowel sound with a Y at the end, like baby, it has a Y at the end, but it's not a double vowel. Instead of writing it this way, I'm going to change the Y into an I to make the word babies. Just like when we make the word plural with a Y, it's also important to know that other endings can also impact a word with Y. For instance, if we look at a word like empty, and we want to change that word to a word with a suffix at the end, often the suffixes will need to have a change. The only exception to that is ing. With the word emptying, We will leave the Y in place and add ing. Because we are, we're adding ing with an I, we don't want to change the Y to an I. However, if I write the word emptied, I'm going to change the Y to an I and add ed. If I do emptiness, 
which is even a consonant suffix, I'm going to change the Y to an I and add N-E-S-S. -S. For a word like emptier, I'm going to change the Y to an I and add E-R. -R. Take a moment to look at this suffix, A-B-L-E. It says a bull. Think of words you know with this suffix. I'm going to start you with a word, dependable. See if you can think of any other words that have a bull added to the end of them. We are going to look at some words where we can add a, b, l, e to the end and what we need to do to them. Remember, in a word like this with rely, because this y is at the end and it is not a double vowel, I'm going to have to change the y to an i. Reliable. Whereas in the next word, my o, y is a double vowel sound. And this is a closed sound. So I will not need to change that to make the word enjoyable. In my next word, I have observe. In this one, I have a closed sound, and I have an R-controlled sound. But at the end, I have a silent E. I will need to cut off that silent E to make the word observable. In the next word, I have repay. That A-Y at the end serves the same way as the O-Y in this word. So I will not need to change it to have repayable. For laughable, I can just add A-B-L-E to the word. For comparable, I'm going to need to take off that silent E again when I make the word comparable. And in winnable, this one's tricky and we hadn't talked about it yet, the word win is a 1-1-1 one, one, one word. So in this case, to add a bull, I'm going to have to double the N. W-I-N-N-A-B-L-E. Our demonstration words we're going to talk about, one of them is dependable. I am going to mark this depend a bull, and I'm going to mark that by boxing it in because it's a suffix on the end. But D is an open syllable. And pend is a closed syllable. So we have an open syllable, a closed syllable, and a suffix on the end. For the next word, we have interfered. Interfered. Remember, there's that silent E that's been cut off from interfere. I'm going to mark this by a closed syllable for in. Ter has the R controlled, and fear, remember that um, long sound is taking control instead of the R. So this is a long E, and it's a VCE sound, and we have this suffix on the end. Dependable means someone or something that will always do what you expect. The bus is dependable because it is always here at 9 o'clock. The word interfered means that something got obstructed or got in the way of something. Their talking interfered with our ability to enjoy the movie. We are going to go over the high frequency words for this lesson. I'm going to give you all four and spell them. I want you to spell them as I do. And remember, you can come back to this if you need to look at it again. We're going to spell them one time. The first word is change. C H A N G E change. Think of a sentence to go with the word change. Our next word is the word usually. Usually. U-S-U-A-L-L-Y. Usually. Go ahead and come up with a sentence to go with the word usually. Our next word is the word around, A-R-O-U-N-D, around. 
come up with a sentence you could use for the word around. Our last word is rough. R O U G H. Rough. Come up with a sentence you could use for the word rough. As a recap of our lesson, today we identified and created words using parts of words. We evaluated the rules we follow when writing and reading words. We introduced and applied the suffix able, a bull, to base words, and we introduced new demonstration in high frequency words.